There's nothing worse than a metalhead stuck with the wrong guitar. Everyone will tell you not to buy a metal guitar. Uh, uh, you should get a, a, a 59 Fender Strat. They're, they're the only proper guitar. Oh, uh, no, actually, uh, get a classical. That's, that's the way everyone should start playing. Or you know what? Stop listening to metal entirely and become a dentist or something. You don't need anyone's approval, least of all mine. So if you want to play Meshiga on a Strat, go for it. But there are beginner guitars out there that will make learning metal easier and more enjoyable. So we'll look at a few specs that are important to watch for, and then we'll go shopping for a few models that I would maybe get if I was starting all over. Single coil pickups have a great spanky clean sound, but they're noisy as f if you want to use distortion. They are great for clean tones, but for metal, you want humbuckers. That's what gets you that thick tone without all the noise. Preferably, you need a modern humbucker. Here, I have a proper brand pickup. It's a Seymour Duncan 59. Sounds great, but it's a little soft for heavy metal. In this one, I have a Duncan design pickup. So it's over a C model, but it's more modern sounding and a lot tighter. So this cheaper pickup sounds better for what I'm doing with it. Active pickups are a thing. Arguably better metal tone, but worse clean tone. But you won't find brand names, active pickups like EMGs or Fishman on a beginner guitar though. As far as bridges go, vintage Tellys and Strat Bridge weren't made for shredders. They're very uncomfortable for palm mutings. And let's face it, this is all that we do. People will argue that you can change the saddles on those bridges. And you can, but this is not a how to mud your old ass guitar guide. Every floating bridge, vintage or new, is going to be more job to maintain and tune than a fixed one. You just can't tune your guitar once and expect it to be fine, right? You got to tune it three, four, five more times, get closer every time. I mean, it's a bit of a hassle. And since you're playing metal, you're going to be down tuning to D every day, right? So each time you drop that E string to D, you'll change the tension on the string, hence the tension on the spring, and your tuning is going to be all over the place. And also a double locking tremolo like this one is a lot more work to maintain, change your string, keep in tune. I mean, once it's in tune and everything is locked in, it's fairly stable. But I mean, we're talking about budget guitars here, right? So you don't have the full-fledged Floyd Rose. I'm not saying these don't work, they do. Not as well as the expensive one where you just tune, lock it in and it stays in tune forever. So for this reason, I will not recommend that beginners get a double locking tremolo like this one, unless you absolutely have to. You know, if all of your favorite bands, they do dive bonds and stuff, and, and, and you just have to play this within your first year of learning guitar. But I think beginners don't need that hassle. It's a lot of work already to learn guitar. I wouldn't inflict that on you. Then there's the fretboard and frets. There's a reason shredder guitars have flat fretboards and big frets, because it makes it easier to do wild bends and vibrato and shred on it. I'm not saying you can't do these things on a Telecaster, but the guitar is going to fight you a bit more. And you don't get any points for trying harder. Nobody cares. These are called fast guitars for a reason. I didn't come up with the expression. And that's because of the slim neck profile, flat fretboards, and fat frets. That being said, guitars sub of 400 US dollars may not have jumbo frets. Compared to jumbo frets, bending with medium frets feels like the... Feels like the strings get stuck in the wood. Now let's go shopping just for fun. I'm Canadian, but I assume most of you are American, so we'll go straight to Sweetwater. So sub $200 is beginner market guitars. You can't expect much at this price point, but you'll have better options than I did in 98. I encourage you to try everything at this price point. Quality control is going to be wild. So look out especially for fret ends. If you end up with uh, what we call a cheese scraper, you're not going to have a good time. Squires basically dominate this price point. Um, they're baby fenders. If you play anything but metal, they're going to be great. I don't encourage anyone to 
by this though. These pickups are gonna be noisy. They're gonna be thin, brittle. They're quite vintage style guitars, which is great for a lot of things, not for metal. Epiphone will always be a strong choice in this price point. They're not particularly metal, but they'll play anything you throw at them. And these Tunematic Fix Style Bridge, they're my favorite of all time. Now we get to the good stuff. These Ibanez Geos or the Jackson JS, this is what I would get for 200 bucks. They have decent pickups, they look great, and uh, they have fast necks. If you decide to pay a little more money, like 300, 350, Ibanez and Jackson are still gonna have great choices, but you can add Schecter and LTD to the list. Don't forget to look at the used market too. I mean, you can buy a $500 guitar for maybe 200, 250. That's a great deal. I'm not such a fan of starter packs. You know, you buy a guitar that's in a box, so you didn't try it. And then you get a small amp with poo-poo distortion sound. Talking about amps would be a video on its own, but for beginners, you can't go wrong with a practice modeling amp, like the Blackstar ID Core, uh, the Bus Katana, or the Roland Cubes. They all have good clean and metal tones. I know Fender makes some, but their metal tones aren't that good. Now, try everything. Beginners have the right to be picky too, right? Don't feel bad about it. And when you're ready to learn your first metal riff, check out this video. Cheers.